this is Cinema. And this is Johannes. And you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings. And welcome back to another episode of Keep or Cull. Where we play our whole collection of 600 plus games and decide whether to keep or cull them. That is correct. And today, before we go into the winners and the stats and the games, we just have a few points of information to get to you before we go into all of that. Yes. First off, next week there's going to be a break in Keep or Cull again. A sad face. Yes. It's basically because I am going to go away for four or five days to play more shows. So it's going to be little time to play Keep or Cull. So the little time we have to play games, we are going to spend on some new games and some review games to get that a bit going as well. Yes. And the other thing is that you probably might have already seen in the thumbnail is that we are playing a lot of Stefan Feld games this year. And a few of you might be wondering, what about these Stefan Feld playthrough series that you started? And then it just disappeared. And mm. nobody has asked where it was. <laughs> Which is one of the reasons why it disappeared. Because it was fun to do it, but it was a lot of work. And especially when we were doing them Keeper Curl and all of that. And a lot more games coming in. It was a lot of time, especially for filming and for mm. uh, editing all of those playthroughs. Yes. And then the reception wasn't the way we had hoped it to be, just to be completely honest. And that's why... We decided to not do it, so we are still going to do playthroughs, but it might be for more hot and new games that probably more people are going to be interested in seeing. So for mm -hmm. the few of you who was really looking forward to that, sorry for that, but we're still going to play all the Seven Fell games, talk about them here, and do like a ranking of all the yes. Seven Fell games. At we the need to do end. that. So this game in this week. It's only games by Stefan Feld. Mm -hmm. And as some of you know, Stefan Feld is one of our favorite designers mm -hmm. of all time. And that also means that calling Stefan game is um, unlikely, mm -hmm. to be honest. It, it, this is actually one of the designers that we have like, or I personally have like a collection, El Collectors wish to have his whole, mm -hmm. whole work. In my collection. Most of them. We're not going to spend hundreds of dollars from Macau, for example. No, no, we're not. Um, so, calling these games today are not going to happen, mm -hmm. but we're still going to like uh, reveal if we would keep or call them. To so basically, give we're gonna our honest opinions. Yeah, we're gonna do basically what we always do, but we're not gonna actually call the games that we yes. call. So, not other than that, no differences. Yes. So, so no forms this week. No forms this week. Mm -hmm. But other than that, we will we will make a color or a pile and mm -hmm. just like um, basically give a verdict verdict to that each is true. game. So then, winners. We have three winners this week. All are from Patreon. If you are a Patreon supporter, you are then able to pick a game and choose it and get it before anybody else. You're not gonna like draw them. You're gonna get it if you pick it first. Yes. So all of them are from Patreon this week. The winners are Carlos. Linda and Socrates. Nice. So yay! Woohoo! Big whoop for you! Big whoop for you! Let's do some stats. Yes, the let's do it. Hours we played was 14. Uh, last week was 7 and last week before that was 3 hours. So more I than mean, those two. Uh, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of hours. That is true. And uh, a spoiler alert, it was played in 2 days because the rest of the week we played review games. Yes. So number of games, 8, which you will yeah. soon see. And how much did Sunua win? I know, I know this week because this is the reason why Stefan Felt is my favorite designer. I'm just kidding. But I I won six out of eight. I'm very sure I did. You won five. Ah, I won only two, five. And uh, the last player won one. Uh, yeah, okay. So, haha, you are a loser. You won nothing. Okay, so <laughs> are you ready? One. You yes. lost this one. So, let's get starting with the first game over here Castle of Burgundy. Are you ready? Yes. One, two, three, boom. Huge surprise. No. Do you want to keep it? Yes. Really? Yeah, this is one of my favorite games of mm -hmm. all time. This is one of the games that got, me, uh, got us into the hobby mm -hmm. and made, especially me, have a love for board games. Mm -hmm. And this is always fun to play. Yeah. We played it with two players, which is the best. The to only play. way. Yeah. And also, we played the old version, even though mm -hmm. we have the new one, because we this like the old one. This is the best one. one. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Next up, then, we have Strasbourg, a little strangely weird auction game from Stefan Feld. Okay, you ready? Yes. One, two, three, boom! I was very sure, though. Okay. Yeah, because when we played this, I liked it more than I thought I mm -hmm. would. Uh, before I played it, I was just like, mm hmm, did, did this really ring with me? I don't remember mm -hmm. having a lot of time the first time I played it. A lot of fun. Um, maybe had a lot of time. I had a lot of time. Depends. I don't know. 
Uh, but this is an auction game by mm -hmm. Sefanfold and a w really interesting one as well you, because you pick your cards mm -hmm. in the beginning of the round and then you like place your bid secretly and then when you get to the item or place on the board that you want to place a bid in you have to choose one of your stacks mm -hmm. and you try to deduce what your opponents will do you have these secret missions that you're trying to achieve it's very very tight game and i was very unsure if i would have kept this mm -hmm. if it if it wasn't a fault yeah i like it a lot i think it's uh, super fun i think it is very different from a lot of other faults I think like if you play a lot of felts and you want to play something that fits really different, play Strasbourg. Yeah. It's a very pure Euro game, not very pure auction game, and I really like it. Yes. So I'm gonna put it on the key pile, which is trying to hidden over here. Yes. Boom. Next up we have Rialto. Okay, ready? Yes. One, two, three, boom. This is just so simple and so mm -hmm. fun. I like how Stefan Felt makes very thought what do you call it a, a lot of ga game in a little time mm -hmm. so so you're basically choosing between like pre-made sets of cards and that is your hand and you're trying to play cards to get bonus throughout the the what do you call it the Round? Round? Thank you! Very hard word to remember very, because we don't never use it in board games. And if you're play, playing the most card in mm -hmm. like a um, category, then you get the most or a bonus in that once so you're trying to like outsmart your opponents and, and get the most bonuses and, and win the game. This is another type of final game that is not very like much talked about or very well known, but I think it's maybe like might be his like hidden gem. Oh, yeah. Like it's super cool so good. and it's very short. We play it in like 45, 50 minutes, three player game. Bam, bam, bam. Very quick. A lot of fun. A lot of gameplay in a short amount of time. Yes. I agree. So Amazing. Keeping game. this one as well. Next up, then we have Trajan. Yes. Are you ready? Yeah. One, two, three, boom. Yeah. Trajan is great. Uh, there's not that much to say about Trajan. We have done a playthrough. We have played it many, many times. It has that little Mancala game. It's basically a lot of just mini games together, but it, it works really well. It's a fun game. Is it my favorite? I don't think so, but it's a very good game. Game. I agree. Nothing to add. It's, okay. it's it's absolutely what you described it to be. Mm. You didn't lie. I like that. Okay, so it's Aquasphere. One of the ones that was really like, when this came out, I remember lots of people do not like it. Lots of people did like it. So what do we think? And now mm. we play it again. Okay. One, yes. two, three, boom. I liked it more also, this one, mm -hmm. than I thought I would. This was also one game that I didn't remember how much I did yep. have with it the last time I played it. Because it's been a long time mm -hmm. since we played it last. And now the planning, like the programming of the robots mm -hmm. and uh, moving around on this, what do you call it, submarine-ish uh, base or yep. something. Um, trying to position yourself for multiple actions on um, onwards mm -hmm. is uh, was a challenge and and a fun one yeah so the the gameplay like the rules are not simple but they're not that difficult not so intricate but there is a lot of depth here and it's super crunchy and so tight and you never have the things you need and you want to do everything and you can't do everything but it is so much fun i did a strategy i had not done before killing all the octopods and getting loads of points for that it is a great game. Another one I think you should check out if you have not played it. Yes, absolutely. Next up, then we played my Black Sheep of the Felves. Because, you know, I don't like Merlin. I didn't like it. I gave it a review where I did not like it. So what do I do? I go out and buy the big box. Of because course. that's what you do for a game you that's don't like. That's what you like. do. So yes. now we play the big box. We played with Merlin, no, with Arthur expansion. All of the modules in that and one other small module. So let's see. Are you ready? Yeah. One, two, three, boom. We're it's, basically keeping this because it's a felt, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a very good game. It is just okay. It's too long for what it is. It's just so you do so many, so many small rules, so much going on, and it's not really engaging. It's I feel like the Arthur expansion for me makes it a lot better. It takes away most of the problems. Mostly the problems I had with the randomness and the not feeling of control what you want to do, but still it's just not engaging. I don't I haven't played the original game. No. So it's I was really game. like excited to play uh -huh. this one and I've heard your thoughts on it before. So I wasn't like super hyped, but mm -hmm. I 
but I don't see like the randomness issues that you have had. Mm, mm, like probably that is because we played with the Archer expansion and that yeah. made it better. Um, but um, but this in all like Fold's game there is an amount of randomness mm -hmm. and it's not the least in this one. I tell you that. But I I like the mechanism with moving around mm -hmm. and like calculating which dice you should do first yeah. to get the action spaces that you want. Mm -hmm. But for me the game just took too long for what it was yes it felt like too bloated and complicated for the amount of pleasure that i got mm -hmm. out of it i think if we play it again like soon yeah i would that would flow faster mm -hmm. and i would enjoy it more but as it is now it, i'm just keeping it because it's a fault yeah it's, it's a fine game but nothing amazing then we have another big box it's a merry-go a merry-go you ready yeah one, two, three, boom! Oh, you like it more now? Or yes. something? Yeah. I, I think we said that when we played it. It was a lot more fun than I thought it was uh, before. I, I liked it. It's been six years since we played it. I think it's a really fun game. It's not my favorite game. It's one I could see myself playing again. Yeah, I agree. I like this more than I like with Merlin. Mm -hmm. This one I have played before and my previous like verdict mm -hmm. is that the game was too long. It felt like I did what I wanted with the game. Yeah, not long then, in actual time, but oh, yeah, long in rounds. Yeah, it overstayed its welcome, kinda, because I thought that I it took away the tense feeling of mm -hmm. oh, I really need to do that before the game ends. But then this game, I didn't feel like that no. in this round of the game. Mm, but it is one of the looser felts. It's not yeah. very tight. It's more like explore and do what you want to do. Uh, you have some things you will need to do in a timely manner, but it's more of a... You have more, so many more actions and so many more resources and stuff that you usually have in a felt. Mm. So it, it might be that because there, but many people like agree that there's one round too much. But we play the game in like one hour and fifteen minutes with your players, yeah, so it's not a long not game. Bad. So I don't feel like it's overstays it welcome, but more than it's one round too much yeah. for what you need to actually achieve in yeah, the game. Yeah, that is. But if you don't mind games say, being yeah. loose, then I think you would like this a lot. It was a fun experience. I just sat down and I enjoyed playing it. But the dice tower or something, cube tower, yeah. in this game is what basically makes it. Uh -huh. The other mechanisms I have seen before mm -hmm. and they're not like overly interesting in this game, but together with the cube tower, it really makes the game unique mm -hmm. and also worth checking out. This is one I would like, opinion. if we're gonna be like the real keeper call, this is a weird episode to do because we're not gonna call anything. This is one you could have talked me into calling, so I'm putting it over okay, here. Yeah. The last game we played and we were actually maybe a bit too tired when we played it, was, you're not seeing it there, was you Forum, him. <laughs> Forum Trojanum, one of the newer films. Are you ready? Yes. One, two, three, boom. Oh, I was unsure about this. Yeah, it's on the it's on the, it's oh, on yeah, the edge. It's on the edge. Like if we were actually gonna keep our call, I might have chosen keep, mm. like, but, but like if I'm gonna be super like tight on myself, I would have chosen to. Because now we can be strict without being strict. Yes. I love that! Well, for Infradanum came the same year as Carpe Diem. We're yeah. going to re have this in the keyboard call as well later. And for Infradanum was on the heavier side. Mm -hmm. And when we played it yesterday, I saw a lot of positive things in it, like mm -hmm. the grid where you're trying to open up spaces where you can build, so you can build like in a strategic way just to to get the combos for the scorings, for example, mm -hmm. but also the, what do you call it, main the common board mm -hmm. which we share, which we're trying to block each other and build in the, the most efficient way. I, I thought it was fun. Yeah. It felt a little random for its heaviness uh, yesterday, but I think that is uh, that is what you kind of have to love about felt as well because there are all ways to mitigate it yeah i feel like as there's always. loads of way to mitigate here i don't feel that randomness here the way i do in merlin i feel like it's hard to mitigate the luck and the bad luck in merlin that it is here there's so many ways to go about it i feel like so uh you're just wrong but uh, I, I disagree but that is okay yeah the, the, and that's interesting totally that's like that's that's what because you and the other player thought it was more random but I feel like there's many ways to mitigate here, but it's not my favorite film, but it's one I enjoy. Yes, I agree. So those are the eight ones for this. So if this was an actual real Keeper Call episode, this is how it would look. Uh, but since it is not, this is how it looks. 
Uh, so, so yeah, we're gonna we we're have gonna like keep it all. I think we have like nine more felts that we yeah. are gonna get to. So as I said, next week there's not gonna be any, and probably we're gonna see how much time we have next week after that because I want to do all of the rest of the felts in in one more week. Yes, yeah, so, we're so it might to. be another week with other keeper color games and then the felt week. We're gonna see things. There's a lot of things going on in yeah. our lives right now. Please let us know if you thought this was an interesting take on it, um, because we're keeping everything, but it's it's. I hope it's still fun to see what we would do if we weren't. Yeah, because we are going to go through all the games. Yes, so there might are. be some like rules changes here and there because that's it's our show. So we do what we want we to do. We do what we want to do, yeah. So that is the end of this episode. It was a lot of fun to explore these thoughts again. Oh, we have to remember, best and worst game for oh, the yeah, week. yeah, yeah. Hmm, worst... Oh, it's hard because I kind of... It's not of... hard, it's Merlin. Yeah, for me. yeah, maybe because it was too long. It was so long. It was so long. It was so long. And best experience for you. Rialto. Rialto I, was really fun. I think I was great for me. Oh, cool. It was nice. so good to play it again. It was a lot even better than I remember it was. Cool. So that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for all the support for watching us and for watching us just talk about these games. It's it's weird that yes. you like us, but it You're means awesome. a lot. You are amazing. If you are still here and you have not subscribed, why not do it? It's free. Yes. And it makes us happy like this. If you want to do something that's not free, but still fun, you can go to patreon.com slash boardgamingramblings and give us your support there if you have the ability. That means a lot. That helps us a lot. And that is the end of another video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Johannes. I'm Senua. And you've been watching Board Gaming Ramblings. And bye-bye.